Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. It's 5.53 a.m. Central Standard Time, November 27, 2018. I see a little glint of daylight, a little blue in the black. Dawn is arriving, which means it's time for a taste challenge. <laughs> I have from 1965, well, not this bottle, but the brand, 100 Pipers Blended Scotch Whiskey. Introduced by Chivas Brothers in 1965. At that time, Chivas Brothers had already come under the control of Seagram's. But from what I can understand, it seems like it was a independently operated division of Seagram's, kind of like Line and Kugels with Miller Coors, they kind of like run their own run their own show. As long as the money keeps coming in, they'd be left alone. Uh, well, you know, and you may, Bucky Dent said, what's up? Just chilling, drinking a bud. What's up? And you may not know this, but you may know this. In the year 2000, in the last century, the end of the last century, this the House of Seagram's collapsed. The company, um, fell apart due to terrible debt problems and mismanagement. I suppose buying things they didn't need and not being able to pay for it. And so, uh. All of their assets were auctioned off and people started lining up and buying their stuff in sort of like a fire sale. <clears throat> and Pernod Ricard came along and bought up the Seagram's gin, brand rights, recipes and all of this and the 100 Pipers and maybe some others. So 100 Pipers is one of the top selling blended Scotch whiskeys in Asia, like Thailand, India, not too popular in America, although it's a steady seller. Uh, like my friend David said, that's a bar whiskey. He knows about it. I said, okay. It's handled by Heaven Hill in the United States. I didn't say it was produced by Heaven Hill. It's handled by them. It's sent over here and it's bottled at their uh, Bardstown, Kentucky facility. If you look on their website, there's nothing about this. You have to go into their product list and you bring that up. It's just all files. There's no photos or anything. It's just say okay they sell it various configurations that's not that unusual because you got constellation brands handling uh many grupo modelo beers in the united states and it goes on and on so 100 pipers now at one time but there's only four pipers on here but i guess the other 96 are in the background you can't see them, they're obscured. Ugh. And 100 Pipers is related to a king or a pretender to the throne. And this next whiskey is related to a king, King Robert II Scotch. So well, let's, let's look at this. So, um, in the 1960s, 100 Pipers got heavy magazine, no television ads back then. You know, you, you probably remember that t whiskey was not allowed on TV or any liquor. But cigarettes were, and now cigarettes haven't been allowed since 1971. Because of the, uh, that gov the government, the imperial entity in D.C., but anyway, um, so um, I guess that faded and you never saw ads anymore. But you can look up some old magazine ads and they're very interesting talking about we use over a, what was it, over a hundred different whiskeys in the blend or something like that. And they show these people in lab coats blending the 100 Pipers. I don't know about all that, but that's what the ad said. Now. King Robert II, I don't know when this came out. I can't find out, I can't find the date. But I know it's been owned by uh, 
Ian McLeod Distilling Company in Scotland since 1968. That's when they bought it from another company. So that's how long it's been around, at least 50 years. But you know it's been around longer than that. Oh, thanks. Pour too much. Oh, what you want? I got to pour some back. <laughs> the glass is clean. It won't matter. I don't want to do too much of this tasting. I have chores to do today. Earth mother, your children are here. I am feeling dandy. Earth mother, your children are here. Ripped on Coke and candy. Okay. You go over here, King Robert, or as they say, Louisiana Robert. You might say, oh, look, Robert Supermarket, but it's Robert, <laughs> pronounced Robert. I still can't get it even. Oh, man, man. All right. John and Neely says, good morning, Ron. I've been looking forward to this one. This will be tough. Yeah, it's going to be a real taste challenge, John and Ilay. All right. Let me make one more exploration of the date, and then I give up. King Robert the second. Oh, spirits and liqueurs, scotch whiskey, gin, rum, vodka, Ian McLeod distillers. King Robert the second whiskey of Fresh Springs Blending Limited. What the heck? Let me check this out. That could be the original owner. Pseudo Mark II. Pseudo Mark. First use anywhere, February 14, 1968. First use in commerce, August 5th, 1968. Expired, that's strange. Let's look over here. There's nothing about it. It's just saying. <clears throat> There's nothing. Uh This could be when they register in the USA. I don't know. I can't figure it out. So, well, we know it goes back to at least 1968, but I'm sure a lot older than that. It's not some like premier brand, okay? King Robert II was and is sold as an ex inexpensive value brand. It would not be $18.99 for a 1.75 no, liter bottle if it was some highfalutin good brand. But hey, maybe it's okay. I don't think anybody with good sense is gonna buy uh, 100 Pipers for $8.99, which is what it is here, or King Robert II, you say you get it for $9.99 in the Atlanta area, and you're gonna think, oh, this is world-class. But it might be okay, acceptable, tolerable, decent. Some people don't have a lot of money. Most people don't have a lot of money. 
And so they have to be careful. A lot of people are not careful. They buy everything, buy, 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 and they use credit cards and they, they go into debt and they borrow here, borrow there. And then they're in a mountain of debt. And that's why they run those commercials on television all the time. Are you drowning in debt? And then they're, what they're trying to do is lend you more money, make a new loan, consolidate it. But it's a, it's a very bad trap. Then you have a bunch of junk that depreciates in value. Maybe a house will appreciate. Maybe, but you never know with neighborhoods these days. So it's very hard to go after uh, lesser lights of the world who de degrade the um, environment. I don't mean just nature. I mean the environment, the, the, the civilization. Okay. Will I be able to tell them apart? Um, I think I will because I do believe that the King Robert II Scotch will have less of a smoky and roast, a uh, 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 smoked pork thing under taste than the the um, 100 Pipers. Now, the, I've already mixed them up. I don't know which is which. The, the, the appearance is similar, but uh, uh, see, I think that was 100 Pipers because it's a little bit, oh, Robert, <laughs> right. I got to mix up a little bit more. Can you remember which one was higher? Because I just left it. I think the Robert is a little, the King Robert, I think the King Robert is a little darker, but it's so minimal. All right, time to challenge. Challenge. Let's go. Oh, well, there's a little smoke here. Like, emphasize the word little as much as you can emphasize it. And a little peatiness, organic compost type material. And then just a generalized grain aroma. You say grain? Yeah, you know, like corn and barley, which is grain. When I say corn, I mean maize to my European viewers. Now this concoction over here, <laughs> this one over here smells like sweet corn syrup. You know, somebody might say, oh no, you've gone bonkers, you've gone crazy. I know what I'm smelling. Yeah, it's what it smells like. Uh, you know those uh, candy corns that they have at Halloween? That's what it smells like. Now, <laughs> you say, I don't go buy scotch so it can smell like candy corn. I'm just telling you what it smells like. Get that with a lot of blended, blended uh, whiskeys, American and scotch. Not so much Canadian. Because they have all those odd distilled spirits added in in Canadian. The the wine, <laughs> the barrel aged wine, and then they have all these distilled rum, brandy, gin, not gin, I don't think. Rum, brandy, and bourbon. You say, what about the smoke? What about the peat? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I think I already know which is which. If I remember correctly, and I might be wrong, if I remember correctly, the King, the the the, the uh, 100 Pipers didn't have much smoke or peat in the aroma. It had that candy corn aroma. It was just like, but the flavor was much better. The the uh, that that tended to um is where it was shining. So what you lost on aroma, and you lost a whole lot. You gained it back on the flavor. So I, I understand what people are going to say. People buy 100 Pipers simply as a 
mixing whiskey. It's a cheap thing they make mixed drinks with. I'm sure 99% of the time that is the case. And for King Robert II too, probably. How many people do these taste challenges with these things? Like me, John and Nile, and maybe two other people on the planet. <laughs> Candy corn starting to come out here. Oh, oh, it's the candy corn contest. It's the corn syrup extrapolation. Now, are they taking just corn syrup and distilling it into column stilled grain whiskey? Can that can that be done? I don't know. I thought they had to use corn grits. But you never know what they're up. Up to these days, Miller Coors used to use yellow corn grits. They even showed that on the tour. They had this container showing the grits. That's corn kernels. That's all crushed, dried, real dried and crushed up into grit, grit like granules. But they don't show that anymore on the tour. I noticed the last time I was there because they went to obviously a less expensive option, which was corn syrup, dextrose maltose, the uh, brewer syrup. Has it changed the flavor of Miller High Life? I have not noticed a change. And I drank it for 22 and a half, 22 years, 22 and a half years. Uh, I wasn't sitting there concentrating on it, thinking now one day they're gonna switch to corn syrup. So I gotta be very cognizant of that change. I haven't noticed that, but I had taste the same to me. It may, it may even have less of that vegetable it seems like Miller High Life has less of that steamed vegetable thing going on now. I'm sure they're very careful. Like if they do switch over, they're careful. They're, they're careful. They do numerous endless taste tests and they do blind taste tests at those laboratories with focus groups and consumers. They got to make sure they don't, they can't, you know, a, a lot of brewing companies and distilling companies learned a very good lesson from the Schlitz Brewing Company. <laughs> Candy corn, interesting. We use 100% pure candy corn grits in all our products, right? Okay, I gotta taste it. The aroma here is not too delightful for either one of these. It's not terrible, but it's not exactly, you're not gonna smell these and say, oh, I just gotta run out and get it. <laughs> mm hmm All right. Okay. Green. Smoke. There is a smokiness throughout the undertaste. Not at the top side of the taste, but the undertaste, the underbody. And peat, yeah. But I know that smoke and peat's coming from the single malt whiskeys as blended with that grain filler, which is probably 80 20. I bet you it's an 80 20 ratio, wouldn't you think? 80% grain whiskey, grain neutral spirits, whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing. Same old thing. And you're getting 20%. The single malt whiskeys, it could be many, many, many blended in, giving it that flavor. And it tastes just like it's about that ratio. It's about 80% vacant and 20% action. Your contention, you might say that's not true whiskey, that's just some blended. It is legally whiskey, it is true whiskey. So it's the blended Ameri American blended whiskeys. I didn't say they were good, I said they were legally a, an actual whiskey, they are whiskey. I was talking to Tom the Beer Whisperer and I said, what about Seagram's VO Gold? And he told me, that's not a true whiskey. But legally it is. Um, that's just an opinion from somebody who's not official. I could say opinions too and they're not official. So we, ha we really have to go by the law, the law, the law. Cause you could sue, you could, you could have a case that uh, you were being fraud defrauded they were committing fraud. They were selling whiskey that wasn't truly whiskey and you could win, but you would lose in this case because uh, that is a class of whiskey. And you can check me on that by looking at the Tax and Trade Bureau. Uh, it's called this 
I think it's called the Distilled Spirits Handbook. Very extensive. Okay. When I used to teach history, I used to tell the students, never just go by what I say. Check me on it. You should not, I would tell them that you should not always just believe anything a teacher says, because what if they're wrong? And many are always challenge, I mean, respectfully, in a respectful manner, or check them. So yes, blended whiskeys are a true whiskey. Now, whether you think they're good or not, that's an opinion and you have every right, of course, to make the opinion. And if you're right, you're right. I mean, you can't be wrong. You can't say your opinion is just how you feel about it. The Buchanan's is the only blended scotch I can recall that had a very pronounced smoky quality. These two are so light and mellow. Yeah, the Buchanan's kills these. It's just like a farce. Oh, mama. <laughs> oh, these are so quaint. A lot of grain whiskey and a little corn, a little smoke and a little, a little, what's that stuff called? Peat. Uh, oh, oh, man. And then I remember Tom and uh, James Marshall got into it on one of those late night Rajay hangouts. That was after I had got banned from that hangout with no explanation either, but I might add. But I was still watching them, monitoring them, watching them. And uh, they were talking, they were as late, it goes on and on. They were talking in a, uh, somehow to come up with whiskey and uh, Tom to Bill Westboro was saying, oh, bah, 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 you know, and then uh, James Marshall was laying in bed like he does. And he said, Tom says something about American whiskey. And then James said, oh, but those are not true whiskeys. Uh, those are not true whiskeys in America. All you have is bourbon. That's not a real whiskey. And then Tom, of course, said, no, I believe you're incorrect on that point. Well, actually, he didn't use that type of uh, response. It was a more beer whisper-esque rebuttal. Something about something you, what do you say? Something with some single syllable word, something you and um, then the, it was a big old uproar and then he was saying uh, no bourbon, it's bourbon, not whiskey. And then he Tom said, bourbon is whiskey, dumb something, call him dumb something, dumb, dumb donkey or something. Um, but he was actually right. In that case, uh, maybe the presentation was a little rugged, let's call it. <laughs> um, but he was actually correct. Bourbon is a whiskey and James was wrong saying it wasn't a true whiskey. So he was wrong in that with his contention, it didn't make any sense. He might have said, well, that's whiskey I don't like. That would have been correct. But that was very comical to watch. And it was a big uproar. And then I didn't when, didn't see the beer whisper on that hang out anymore too long after that, nor James. <laughs> it became restricted to just a few. So it flowed. They said they wanted it to flow better. Flow, flow. But after that, I thought the excitement was gone. And then it was just like, you just stand by a canal and watch water flow. It's flowing. It's not particularly interesting. But anyway, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. Yeah, that could be true. All right. But anyway, that's not this. I'm not saying it for a personal thing. I'm just saying it because it was something I watched. It was interesting to watch. Even when he got into the big conflict with me on the Rod J hangout, called me racist and all these and said, I did all these things. You did all these things. And I said, what are they? Tell us, tell the world. The world is watching. You know what they are. I said, well, let's 
put it out there. No need to hold back. Name the things. And I just waited like this. But I never heard anything. There was no evidence to back up the allegation, which I found was comical. But people were all saying, oh, I was so, it was so, I was so aghast. I was so, it was so troubling. And all this feedback after, I said, I just thought it was interesting. It's better to watch than all the humdrum four hour videos where people are just talking about, oh yeah, I went to a bottle shop. Oh yeah, I found a bluebird, Coniston bluebird. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I say, oh boy, I wouldn't want to watch them. people talk. You say they're watching you talk. Yeah, but I'm bringing you interesting and exciting facts. <laughs> all right. Plus, I'm trying to misdirect your thinking away from the fact that I can't tell these apart and I'm very troubled by it. <laughs> See if I can get your mind, if I can get your mind on the drama, then I can take your mind off my dilemma. All right. Well, that is a little smoky. I have to say the one on my left hand is a little smokier than this dull item on my right hand. At my right could be your left. Sometimes these are reversed. You can't ever figure out how they are reversed. Oh, that is so dull. Now on their own, this is what you got to remember. What you must remember, this is what you must remember. In isolation, when you drink these on their own, they'll have a lot of qualities that will make them seem pretty nice. The danger zone is when you start doing comparisons and contrasts. And then it'll, it'll seem like it's a different product. It has no character, nothing. It's just drab, dull, dreary, and depressing. And that's what this one is. This one has no character. <laughs> but it is a true whiskey. <laughs> I guess it has some character. It's just not good character. That's just like grain alcohol. I'm sorry, folks. You know what? I would just buy Heaven Hill blended American whiskey for six for $5.99. Matter of fact, the other day I saw Dobra, Dobra, grain vodka. You know, those American vodka made with grain. $5.99. I'd just buy that. I mean, it's all the same thing anyway. It's just grain alcohol. No. But then, of course, I wouldn't buy them at all. I mean, I might buy Dobra to do a review because people like those kind of little weird brands that have a history. It's like a brand that has an old, a long history, but it's so obscure. Or Skull, Skull Vodka, S K O L. I said, oh no, that's five ninety nine too. I mean, you just soon buy that. Buy the cheapest stuff. If you're gonna go low grade like this, just go cheap, 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 cheap. It won't be too bad, but it sure won't be too good. All right, here we go. Mm. There's more going. There's more going on here. John Neely, I tried to watch some of the beer fortnightly show last night. I just couldn't do it. I was watching a little bit of it, and I said, "Oh no, I can't watch this." I don't care. I mean, I'm not attacking it. Okay. I might get feedback. You attacking my channel? Not attacking it. I'm just saying, me, my personal preference. I couldn't watch it. It was just somebody's talking to, and then I got their mic. Oh yeah, yeah, I was doing this, and I did that, and I did this, and then I was doing that, and I thought this, and the other one say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I noticed it was going on for four hours. But I never could take that. I don't like those hangouts that are not focused. That's me. That's my personal preference, okay? That's why I started to do the examinations where we would take a certain brand of beer and focus on it. I always like those the best. Tonight, we're going to focus on Foster's Ale. And then everybody gives their opinion about that particular brand. And there's a focus. We'll give the history. And, and then they kind of took that idea in Canada. I suggested it in Canada back when I did their hangouts four years ago and I said we ought to do 
and it was kind of laughed off. But then they were thinking that, that isn't a bad idea. So they started doing the beer one beer analysis 101 where they focus on a brand and that's the way to do it. So uh, they all say, here's the brand. And then they talk about it. What's your history with the brand? Oh, I, I used to drink it or they'll say, oh, I never really drank it too much. And then they'll give their evaluation and their rating and it's concise. OK, now the wild card Wednesday on Eric's channel, it's fine. Everybody brings whatever beer they want and they talk about it. But in my opinion, it's not as interesting because now if it's a bunch of beers I've had, then I want to hear what people say. But they might say, oh, I've got this obscure beer from New England. It's called Shablip Ticonderoga Stout. And then they say, it's got this, it's like that. It's going, nah, 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 nah. and I'm just listening like, I never heard of this beer. I don't, why do I want to hear about this? You know, and then now I might have a beer that they'd never heard about. And I don't know why that would be interesting to them. But if it's some, so that's that's all I'm ranting about. If it's focused, then to me, it's more interesting. Now I do the wild card Wednesday out of a, a mostly, I guess, out of a courtesy in a way. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? But you know, I started it four years ago with the examination concept, and then I got. I actually ran out of ideas. <laughs> I couldn't think of any more beers to do, and then. A lot of people had lost interest because they just they wanted to do it. I want to jump on. I want to do the examinations. But they didn't realize that it goes on forever. Um, they were thinking, like, well, why do I keep getting invites? I was like, I was thinking, didn't you realize this is for like a 40 year period? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on. And then they got kind of freaked out and they slowly left. <laughs> um. But then Eric was saying, we got to keep doing it. We got to keep going. We have to keep going. I said, why? I can't think of anything. I told Paul we shouldn't do it once a week. He wanted to do it once a week. He couldn't keep doing it because the children climbing all over his back. But I said, it's too much. We should do it once a month. But he said, no, we'd lose momentum if you, unless you didn't keep driving home the point. I said, okay. But Eric said, no, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. Well, then he, he ran into the same problem, finding a beer that everybody can get. Because he might say, oh, I found this beer from uh, from Rhode Island. It's fantastic. Let's all review it. Well, we said, we can't get that beer. <laughs> and so that's where it broke down into Wild Card Wednesday. Then you can just bring whatever you want, which is good because everybody can bring something, right? The downside is you ha might have to listen to 75% content on beer you've never had and that you're not particularly interested in. You see the problem there? Okay, uh, let's see with the comments. And then I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a termination. Dobra, never heard of it. Yeah, it's it's around. It lurks around the liquor stores. Actually, there's a lot of convenience stores here. John and Ellie says, same here. There has to be some direction with these things. That's why I don't understand how people can watch these long off-topic hangouts. No, I can't do it. I don't even watch talk shows on. Now I watched an interview with, with um, I almost said Karl Marx, <laughs> Groucho Marx from about 50 years ago. It was very interesting, but it was a focus. Him, his life. He told stories about his career and how he never finished high school or anything. Well, that was interesting. See, they had a. It was a topic. And I do like it when we drink the same thing. That way, we can all relate. At least. At the very least, a particular style. Yeah. I was getting into like a conflict with Tom the Beer Whisperer four years ago because I was saying we need to focus on a brand, a particular brand. And he was saying, no, 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 buckaroos. We need to do just a style. And I was saying, yeah, but the problem with the style is. You know, you might have to listen to people talk about stuff you never had or never tried and it wouldn't it just wouldn't be interesting. Because we wouldn't, we used to do hangouts in 2013, back when Maria joined and all of that. There's so much history behind it. But I was saying we need to have more focus, more focus. I was saying that in 2013. I said it's kind of boring just to just be talking randomly about nothing, more or less. And they kind of agreed with that. Yes, yes, yes. So we started the beer examinations now. To me, that was the best format because that went on for four years. So it was very strong. And it was a single product. 
boom, boom. And a lot of views and people commenting on it and telling their story about it. Oh, I first had Ice House back then and whatever. And it was so popular with like Steel Reserve 211, we had to do two hangouts. We had so many people, they couldn't, we had more than 10 people. So we had to do a first session and a second session. That's when it was at its peak and everybody was just into it. But they didn't realize that it doesn't end. There was no end point. That's why they got kind of disturbed about it. It was like the Hotel California, you know what I mean? They could they could check out any time they wanted, but they could never leave. You see, they say, oh, no. They say, you came at me like an affliction, but you left me like an addiction. And I said, well, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that point. <laughs> it was like Jonestown. You could come and drink with us and uh, taste things, but... Um, Might be a problem leaving Jonestown anyway. Just kidding around. All right, um, let's see. Mother, 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 mother. We can't live in peace. All right, now, I think this is the 100 Pipers because it has a richer flavor, it has more character, and it's better. Is it a good whiskey on its own? Uh. I'm gonna let you decide that. You have the money or you don't have the money. You have the purchasing power. So if you wanna buy it, buy it, try it. If you don't, don't, you see. But, um... oh, and one more thing. I'll talk about the view. I'm talking about all this past history and drama and all that. But I will admit that I would still do hangouts with any of the people I discussed. I don't ever harbor any animosity. I don't mind those flare ups. That's a natural thing, interaction. I think people on the internet are very weak and uh, childish in a lot of ways because they'll say, oh, in 2012, you made me angry and I blocked you and I, I don't like you. I thought that people should be a little more grown up and be able to let bygones be bygones. Oh, heck, when people are drinking, you know they're gonna say things they shouldn't say. Oh, I mean tasting, what did I say drinking? I don't know where that came from. So I think people need to um, grow up a little bit. But that's just my opinion. I'm sort of, uh, oh, well, heck, it. who cares, you know? It's the past, let's, let's just taste the products. It should be about the product anyway. That's what I've said all along, back to 2009, uh, 2010, 2010, excuse me. I said all along, it's supposed to be about the product. And I was telling Dr. Dave that when we had our big, which was a lot blown up more than it actually was. Dr. Dave versus Ronald Terrio beer reviews, Louisiana beer reviews, the great enemies. <laughs> and we used to laugh about it privately. I said, they don't even realize we talk privately. <laughs> but uh, it was sort of like professional wrestling in a way. But I used to tell him all the time, it's supposed to be about the beer, the beer. Why? What is all this personal stuff? It's supposed to be about the product. I don't know you. You don't know me. He said, that's right. And that's when we had the big, what was it? Uh, Peace in the Beer World 2016 bombastic video, which set off a firestorm. The reconciliation video, which we were planning, you see. Um, and he agreed with that. It's supposed to be about the products, not... Oh, you hurt my feelings because you said I was too um, particular about price. <laughs> that's actually, that was a conflict some people had. One person focused too much on price. Well, that's his money. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, this thing is too much grain whiskey. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't handle this. <laughs> it does have a nice little peat. And I have to give it this. It has a, maybe I was harsh, too harsh, because it has a dough undertaste. I remember that, a dough, like a bread dough. So I think that's King Robert II. And I think this, I think this is 100 Pipers. Oh yeah, Leaving the Island. That was the name of the video, Leaving the Island. <laughs> I remember that. I think both of those examinations had 10 people on the panel, 20 different people talking about still reserve. Ah, those were the days, the good old days. <laughs> oh man, it really was good. We had Tanya Makowski in the beer cub, and uh, there was a lot of people. Even Marilyn, Jake, and uh, 
Jacob Miller, who was bringing in ham's ice. Remember, he did, there is no such thing as ham's ice, so he made a ham's ice. <laughs> uh, but he didn't want to join the whiskey. He, he didn't drink uh, hard alcohol, so he hard liquor, so he didn't join anymore. All right, uh, Jacob Miller, the, the famous ham's ice episode. All right, so I think this is the, um, I think this, what is it called? 100 Pipers. <gasps> oh, ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, well, uh, anyway, go back and look at all my comments about the drama. I want y'all to get caught up in the drama and beer to drama and personal animosities and accusations. And this man said this and this one said this and I'm offended. Let's concentrate on that. Don't concentrate on me tasting this stuff because, uh, um, uh, well, <laughs> I was wrong again. This is King Robert II. Oh, ouch. Wow. Well, <laughs> I want to retract every comment I just made throughout this video. <laughs> and this video is a parody and should not be taken seriously. I wouldn't feel too bad about this one. These products are so similar, John Neely says. And somebody was asking me, uh, why you don't hang out with Dr. Dave anymore? What happened? You don't get along? I said, I just talked to him yesterday. He doesn't drink anymore because he has a lot of heart problems, you know, health, your health. Good reason to give up alcohol if your doctor tells you if you keep drinking, you'll die. That's a pretty good incentive. He likes to talk about cats. He's got a big group where they talk about house cats and all the cute things cats do. I don't know why that's bad. Seemed like something positive to focus on. So that's what they do. But some people resent that. They're angry about it. I'm so angry that he does cat videos. Why would you care about that? Okay. Um, I'm pretty shocked, you know, that the 100 Pipers had the had the uh, bread undertaste, the the uh, bread dough. Well, like John and Neely is saying, they're so similar, you can't really tell them apart. And I agree with that. So it's a tie. I mean, really, maybe maybe King Robert wins. OK, we'll give King Robert the win. It wins by a. By a sip, not by a nose, but by a sip. Big deal. They're about the same price. So either way it goes. You're not losing much, but on the other hand, you're not really getting too much. It's like if you drink Ham's beer. Don't get on the internet talking about how awesome it is, because really, hams ain't that awesome. It's not bad, but I drank some hams, and I was like, man, this stuff is pretty dang dull. Not bad. Now, you see, people like to say ridiculous things like, oh, it's horrible. It tastes like battery acid and horse urine. I don't know. I've never tasted those things, but uh, no, hams is none of that. It's just bland and dull, and that's why it's cheap. Anyway, it failed in Louisiana. They tried tried selling it around here with absolutely no promotion and it lingered on the sh shelf. No one ever heard of it. They said, what the heck is hams? The price was not even that low. So people did not bite on it and it failed. Justifiably, just like Genesee cream ale, they sold it here, did nothing to promote it, lasted six months and it was gone. Um, so if you want a cheap, inoffensive, but thoroughly bland, blended Scotch whiskey, you can buy King Robert II or 100 Pipers, and I think you'd be totally satisfied. They're not terrible. They're just dull and boring. But that's what you get for $8.99. Generally, you get dull and boring. Now, I was very put off by the Bal Balvenie. Balvenie. My daughter bought this triple cask. You can only buy it at an airport, so I can't go buy more. I guess I could go to New Orleans Airport, but wouldn't I have to go through security to get to the gift store? gift shop. I don't want to go through all that. I mean, I could do it, but then they probably think something's up. I go in there, go through security and just buy the whiskey and leave. What is he doing? He's up to something. Yeah, I am up to something. I'm buying whiskey and leaving, but I'm not going to go through all of that just to buy this. But I found this stuff would be very, was, was very bland. It has kind of a weird citrus sourness in the nose. I don't know about this stuff. 
I hope it's not too expensive, but I'm afraid it probably is. I mean, it was fine, but I didn't see where it was um, too fantastic. That was just my opinion. She bought it. She thought I would like it. Okay, we got to wrap this up. I have to do the chores. Oh, it's very clear outside. Only a few clouds. Should be up to 54 today. Everyone in the world except us is using these two cheap blended scotch whiskeys as mixers. That's right. I mean, we have to look at this in perspective, okay? People do not go to Winn-Dixie. Well, in Georgia, I don't think you can buy liquor at a grocery store, but here you can. They do not go to Winn-Dixie or uh, Walmart and buy 100 Pipers and say, oh man, I can't wait to go home and just pour a, a glass and sit by the fireplace and, and swirl it around like this and say, oh, it's so complex. No one does that. I mean, we do because we are, we're eccentric, we're weird, we're strange. Oh, but that's all right. It's okay to be weird because when the going gets weird, the weird go pro. Remember that, when the going gets weird, the weird go pro. All right, I don't think you have to go through security. Usually the shops are before the lines. Is that so? But I thought at the New Orleans International Airport, you had to go through the security, then all the shops were there and you could walk around browsing while you're waiting for the plane for an hour or something. I'll have to check on that. It's been years since I've been in the airport though. I think the shops are on the secure side. You know what I mean? So you can go through security and then you can walk around, but I have to go check. I'll just look at a map on their website. But anyway, I don't even care. I'm not gonna go search for this thing. Why would I do that? I have I, I have back stock that's incredible. I have back stock that's, you, you would almost say troubling, but my friend Davis got me beat. I said, you got so much stuff. <laughs> and he was telling me about it this this past week. What am I going to do with all this beer? It's crazy. I got too much beer. It's going to all go bad. I said, that was the point I was trying to make two years ago. <laughs> okay. I don't know about you, but my idea of buying beer is that you drink it. It's just this little weird thought process I have that you buy it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a drink. So you drink it, but. He's starting to think that too. Like, what is the point of having all this beer if I don't drink it? I'm like, yes, that is the point. And then he was mad because I didn't share the uh, Bourbon County Stout with him. He said, you give me ice beers and I give you uh, Imperial Stouts. I said, wait, time out. You just told me yesterday at the Tulane game, you didn't even like Bourbon County. I said, so when a person tells me I don't like something, I assume they don't want to drink it. Right. And the second point I was making was I never asked for those Imperial Stouts. I would have been just as happy to, to review Tecate or Budweiser with you. You said, here's the expensive beer. And I said, well, sure, let's drink it. But I was never asking for it. So see, I, he, he had to kind of accept that because I never asked for it. And I'm not going to buy Bourbon County Stout again. Yeah, it's a 99 out of 100. It's a nearly perfect product, but I don't like it. You get me? I don't like it. It's too strong. It's too boozy. It's too thick. I don't like beer that tastes like syrup, okay? It's it's heavy like syrup. It's 15.2% alcohol. It's too damn. <laughs> it's too doggone strong. And it's a chore to drink. It's like, why do I have to, you know, I don't want to drink a beer that makes me want to puke. Yeah, it's high quality. It's a 99. Oh, whoopee. I'm going to go post it on Facebook. Oh, I can't get over it. It's just not for me. You might love it. I'm just, I don't like it. I'm not buying it anymore. I'm not buying, I don't like any of those super strong beers. I don't care if they're ales or lagers. Well, the lagers, they're not as good. They come across much worse because they have an even more pronounced chalky undertaste. But even those ales, even those ales, you get the 13, 14, 15%, they'll have that chalk you know what? Beer is not really made to be 15% alcohol, 30 proof. That's liquor. Beer is made to be beer, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to pull away from all that flim flam stuff. And I'm not disparaging it. If you want to buy Bourbon County Stout and the wheat and the orange flavor and the peacock uh, brickwork, uh, exploding plastic inevitable County Stout, buy it. I don't mind. I'm just saying I don't want it. Okay, enough rant and raving. I'm going off. I'm going crazy. I'm flipping out. 
I want to try the new flavor, Midnight Orange. The standard variant is 15 point. Yeah, the standard variant is 15.2 this year. Whoa, yeah, and I drank it and it made me feel sick. The low, the low, the low alcohol variant is 14.7. I said, oh, well. <laughs> so I, I'm getting away from all that stuff. I've been there, I've done it, okay? I've been there and I've done it and I didn't really enjoy it. Sorry. But I have to say this, personal preference plays a big part in alcohol. And I don't know why people can't see that. Remember, personal preference. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video production.